Philippians 4. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Though small, it can grow large within you. The kingdom of God is like a pearl of great price. We are to sell all to gain the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like a seed planted and forgotten. It grows without human help. The kingdom of God is wherever Christ is king. Stand as we sing together our opening hymn of praise, 393, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
happening here? Well, maybe I'll tell you a little better. They're going on a journey. They were slaves in Egypt. And then Moses and his sister Miriam and brother Aaron led the people of Israel out of Egypt where they were slaves and they were headed for the promised land. So what do you think this woman at the front is carrying on her head? What do you like to take with you when you go on a trip? Food and water. Good. <laughs> Food and water. Exactly. This woman is carrying a girl at Sharpsburg said there were eggs in that. I couldn't quite see them, but... Full of water, right. Well, food and water they carried with them out into the wilderness because they had to go through the wilderness on their way to the promised land. But guess what happened? They ran out of what? Food and water. Have you ever been on a trip and got hungry and thirsty? No. You never said, Mom, Dad, we have to stop. I'm going to die of hunger. Never? Huh. I did many times. <laughs> when I was younger, even now that I'm older, we're going to the airport and I told Sandy, we're going to have to stop on the way and get something to eat. They ran out of food first. And they were hungry and they cried out to Moses and said, Moses, did you bring us out here in the wilderness to starve us to death? They cried out to Moses and Moses cried out to God. And guess what God said? Don't worry. Because I'm going to feed them. Tomorrow, I'm going to feed you. So this is what happened. They woke up in the morning. And guess what they saw lying all over the ground? Hmm? Breadcrumbs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Bread of some sort. But they asked, like, what is it? And God said, it is the what is it? Manna. The what is it of God? The bread of God. So, guess what all of you are going to get to do right now? <laughs> I want you to pick up. Come on up. Oh, leave you alone. <laughs> I want you to come up, each of you, and pick up as many pieces as you can and put them in your hand. Rival, you want to help them? Wait, you can't go first. You might get them all. <laughs> Ready? When I say go, see how many pieces of bread. You're not going to eat it. I'm going to have you give it to the bird. <laughs> see how many pieces you can pick up. Ready? Go. All of you. Can you pick them up? <laughs> Can Izzy pick them up for you? Go, oh, sit back down with him. Rival wants you to sit right here. Wow. Don't worry, Sandra, they picked it all up. <laughs> so, how'd you do? Let me see. Great, great. Oh, well guess what happened when they got back to the camp? Those who were big like Bible and fast, they thought they picked up a whole lot, but when they looked at it, it was just enough for the family. And those who were smaller, like Ray Lynn, when they picked it up, even though it had just a little, it was enough. 
for the whole family. It was God's miracle of manna. He gave every family enough. So, on your way down to Sunday school where the girls will teach you more about the manna, I want you to go outside and put this on our lawn for the birds. But first, a song. It's printed in the bulletins. The older group is going to sing it for you all. It's the middle verse of Seek Ye First from out of our hymn book. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Ready, congregation? Man shall not live by bread. Grandma, this is the best day of my life. Now, 
how could you ask for anything more? Perfect. Others today? John. Uh, you're praying so very much in the mind and in the news. So that we pray for God's intervention. Keep it firm. For God's intervention, John asked, in the conflict in the Ukraine. Thank you, John. Vanessa's friend Michaela, expecting in December. We got a text, or I did this morning, just an hour ago from Chris Wise, a member of our church. Her stepfather, who has been a father to her for many, many years, is in surgery right now. A blockage in the intestines. He has cancer. He is struggling. So if we would lift up Chris, who has gone to the Quad Cities to be with him, and Tom in the midst of surgery. Also, Betty Markson has been keeping in touch, and some of you perhaps are on Facebook and know even more than I do, but it's been an up and down week for Brenda Noose. But the latest news I heard is that she was doing better, and they sent me a picture of her in the bed smiling. So. We continue to remember Brenda Markson Noose as she recovers from her lung transplant. Craig. Um, excuse me, victims of the hurricane. The count now well over 100 in Florida and the eastern states. Prayers for the hurricane. Victims. Thank you. Any others today to be lifted up? Yeah. Steve is there, and we've got him on the list. Faith Cordell had a semi fall and broke two bones in her foot. She's home with a boot. So, prayers for Faith Cordell. Any others? Let us pray. Kind God, you know what we need before we ask. And yet you've called us to lift up in prayer all those who are in need. Lord, we begin globally asking for your blessing upon the people of Ukraine and Russia conflict between the two might cease. We pray for those persons in the African continent who are going through a severe drought, famine. Lord, feed them with manna and help us to open our hearts and our purses to help. We pray for the local concerns of your people here gathered. For Vanessa and her friend, Michaela. For Patty's Aunt Carleen, Bill's brother. For Steve and Connie Sawyer. For McKenna and Kyler Christensen and their baby Lucas. We pray for Brenda Markson Noose and the whole Markson family, the Noose family. Lord, continue to bring healing to Brenda, we pray. And be with Chris, Wise, and her father, Tom, and all the family as he goes through surgery, even now. For Faith Cordell, for all the unspoken concerns of our hearts, we lift them up to you, praying the prayer that you taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Remain seated as we sing together. Hymn number 75, Jesus shall reign where air of the sun. Oh, it's not 75, 2, 11, wrong new book. Verses 1, 3, and 5. Jesus shall reign where
that borderland, going east and west instead of directly to where he was headed. Could it be that he was on the lookout for lepers? You see, lepers were not welcome in either Galilee or Samaria. They were forced to live apart from other people. They were forced to shout, unclean, unclean, when anyone came near them. And so they lived on a borderland, so that if people from Galilee forced them to flee, they could just step over the border into Samaria. Or if the people of Samaria asked them to leave, they could just step over back into Galilee. It makes me wonder, if Jesus was walking that borderland to find lepers, because Jesus in his ministry seemed to seek out those who lived in the hinterlands, those who lived in no land, who were welcome nowhere. And I wonder if we want the kingdom of God to come in our midst, if we need to walk those same lines, lines between the healthy and the sick, between black people and white people, between English speakers and Spanish speakers, the line between the rich and the poor. If you want to live in the midst of the kingdom or desire the kingdom to live within you, then you better be walking in a way that all sorts of people can join you. You also be, need to be ready to show mercy. What was it, Christy, that the lepers asked of Jesus? Continue. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Okay. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In the kingdom of God, mercy is available to all. When the kingdom of God is among us, or we are within it, then we have to be showing mercy to those in need of mercy. And by the way, you know why Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest? Because if you had leprosy, only the priest could declare you clean. And as I learned as we studied the Bible together down at Malloy this week, it was a bit of a racket. The priests liked to get gifts in order to pronounce somebody clean. If a leper came to them covered with sores that seemed to be healing, they might say, well, it doesn't look like you're fully healed yet, expecting a little bit of gratuity before they would declare that person clean. Jesus said, Go and show yourselves to the priests, but on the way, they were made clean. They didn't need to go and show themselves to the priests. Jesus had declared them clean. We continue in the text. And as they went to see the priests, they were made clean. Keep going. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. We'll stop there, Christy. Thank you. The kingdom of God is never something we enter alone. Interesting, isn't it, that ten lepers journeyed together? Lepers who were not allowed to go around society, were not allowed into the towns, were not allowed into the temple or the synagogue. They found one another, formed their own community. Jews and Samaritans together, even though Jews and Samaritans at this time had no dealings with one another. They broke down the barriers because they shared a common affliction, leprosy. Don't all of us share a common affliction called being human? Don't all of us share the imperfections of life? 
And yet, though ten of them were journeying together, ten were made clean by Jesus, only one came back, and he was a Samaritan. And aside, sometimes those who are most alienated are the ones who are most filled with thanksgiving and praise. Do you know that in the Christian church, Every Sunday is an Easter Sunday. That's why we often have church on Sunday morning to celebrate the resurrection. In the same way, each Sunday ought to be a Thanksgiving Sunday. Perhaps we always ought to sing the song, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. For that's a song in which we express our thanksgiving and praise to God for what God has done for us. We teach our children to say thank you to anyone who's ever given them a gift. But do we teach them to give thanks to God day by day? To praise God for God's goodness and for the gift of life and for the healing that comes to us. For all of us are sick. All of us are lepers alienated from God. All of us need Christ to declare us clean and bring us back to the kingdom. I've gone a bit askance from your script there, Christy, but maybe you can read the rest of the passage for us. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them bound to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Interesting, isn't it? That faith here in this passage has nothing to do with creeds. The leper does not fall at Jesus' feet and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. We tend to think of faith as something we profess. But in our passage for today, faith is something you do. Jesus said to the leper, Your faith has made you clean. What had he done? He'd asked God for mercy. Christ for mercy. He returned after Jesus healed him and fell at his feet. He praised God with a loud voice and thanked Jesus for healing him. I read a story this week about a new church that's been founded in the Presbyterian Church. It meets on the grounds of the state penitentiary outside of Richmond, Virginia. Every Sunday morning, the congregation comes together in tents, welcoming those who have come to visit the prisoners in the penitentiary. They worship God, they praise God, they give thanks, they share in food. It's people who feel alienated from society because their loved one has been in prison for whatever reason. And the church reaches out to them in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to be more like that. We need to be forming churches that reach out to those who are alienated. Could it be that faith is more about what we do than what we say. Christy, maybe you can help me here at the end as I remind you of the things that happened in this passage by the man of faith, the Samaritan leper. First, he... He asked God for mercy. Second... He returned to Jesus after he was healed and fell down at his feet. Third... He praised God with a loud voice. And fourth, 
He thanked Jesus for healing him. Let that be our faith, too. Let us pray. Kind and merciful God, help us to reach out in the name of Jesus Christ to lepers, to the poor, to those who are exactly like us, for we are all needy. Help us to welcome, to open our hearts, our minds, our churches. Help us to be the body of Christ this day and forevermore. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith, which is taken from 1 Timothy. <coughs> These are the words that Paul used to tell Timothy what he needed to do. We use them as our affirmation of faith today, together. We will make every effort to confirm our calling and election. For if we do, we will be welcomed into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Our closing hymn is 451, Another Kingdom hymn. And I ask you to pay special attention to the middle verse. 451, stand as we sing together. Lead on, O King Eternal.